Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Seasonal Tokens Podcast, where Polar interviews people so you can do more investing and less gambling. It's great that you are consulting projects right now and helping them to figure out their operations, process, and marketing and a lot more, I'm sure about that. So what are the most common questions that you have heard from crypto companies that come to consult with you? Yeah, the big part is around the token allocations. Okay, so that's one. We're looking at the tokenomics. Okay, so tokenomics is basically what controls the whole economy of your project. Okay, so a bad tokenomics will lead to a lot of problems such as selling pressure. This is why When I talk about the pump that we had with MicroPots, I also bring up the selling pressure. We gave out over $10.5 million in rewards over the course of like three months. It's crazy. Okay, so that alone is tokenomics. Okay, you have money you're taking in, you have money you're paying out, and you have utilities. And how all that's working together with the whole ecosystem is really where I get a lot of questions around. Because people don't know how to fit all that together. They also don't know when it comes to like, let's say raising money, Okay, we're going to raise money. Let's say we're we need a hundred thousand dollars. Okay, that sounds like a lot of money to people here that haven't ran a project in Web three. Okay, these AMAs are very expensive. Just the developers are expensive. That's going to get you somewhere. It's going to get you to an MVP. It's going to get you your marketing, but it's still not going to be a ton of money. So we need to have that context, right? And you know that to me is also like, all right, how much money should you be raising? You don't need to raise more than you need. With you need a buffer, of course in there, but you don't want to raise too much. And then now you also have to make sure that you're not selling too much of your supply as well to people because that's giving away control over your token to them. Okay. And so now if your token does well and they decide to sell it and you don't have a vesting schedule since you haven't thought of that, now you're going to have even more selling pressure. Okay. So, you know, how this stuff kind of works together is a big part of what we're doing. It's, it's actually showing them how the tokenomics work together with your utilities. And that's sort of like the biggest question is how do I do all this? You know, how do I come up with these utilities? What are the right utilities? And sometimes the utilities I hear are things that don't even make any sense. I had a project the other day, say they're going to make a DAO. And I'll give a great example here. They're going to make a DAO where if you hold the token, now you can access free training, you can access training materials and they're going to have all these instructors come in and make all these training materials for you know, let's say Web3, marketing, whatever it is. It's sort of like online courses. That's what it is. And if you hold a token, now you can access the course. Here's my question. Why would I hold a token in a bear market when I can go buy a course in Udemy for $10 on any subject I want right now? Makes no sense. So when we don't have any business sense and we come up with these ideas that don't work, you know, it, nobody would want to hold any level of token if the thing's going to go down 50% in the bear market and be absolutely beat to crap because you have the liquidity pair that's either Ethereum or it's BNB or it's Matic, whatever it might be. And maybe you're not in a stable coin. That's another mistake as well, by the way, is if you want something in the bear market, you should consider a stable coin pair for your liquidity. You know, these are things that we consult on, okay, that we advise on. Get rid of the bad idea. Come up with the ideas that people would actually want to buy and use within your ecosystem. Look at it like a business, a company that you're going to have a utility that somebody would pay for because they see value in it, Okay. And then the name of the game is also to figure out, all right, how do you take in more tokens than you give out? Because if you're paying out more than you're taking in, now you have too much selling pressure. Okay, so it's a matter of finding ways to still enable people to drive value and still make it so that the economy is actually sustainable. And that's a big part of what we're doing here is validating all that. That could be using automation tools like machinations where we visually put it in. And it literally looks like a program that's visual where you can actually see the tokens flow in the whole economy. It's incredible how cool it looks. And so we'll visualize that or we do financial modeling and spreadsheets. But, you know, at the end of the day, we're, these are the biggest questions as it regards to utilities, the tokenomics, all the financials. And then the next step is really like an execution. You know, how do I execute? You know, what are the steps in the right order? That's another one that's important. And then for that, I really just, I can come up with a simple game plan for them. And then off the back end too, I have a monthly advisory And this is any project can take up the advisory too. They say, hey, we want to work with you, you know, once a week or twice a week or whatever. Okay, cool. Here's how this looks like. Here's my monthly retainer. You know, that's simple. So there's many different ways that we serve clients. That's usually the most common questions is sort of like, and I have a whole program that covers all this stuff as well. And it leads them from having an idea, coming all out with all the things mapped out in detail, all the financials clarified, and then coming off the back end with a clear execution plan. You know, all that's a program. 
And then we also ask a ton of questions in there along the way. And really, it's it's me asking a lot of the questions. Usually, they think they have it thought out. And when I start asking questions, they're like, I didn't even think of that. you know. And I've caught some that would literally destroy the whole project if just by asking a quick question that I think of. Because I've, I've had things that have impacted me severely with selling pressure. And also with the project, like I said, the, the supply was high in micro pets. Well, we came up with an evolution process that enabled people to burn part of the supply. So that was sort of like the before and the after to add some sustainability more to the ecosystem, right? And that's why I'm passionate about like everything that we're doing here is there's all different topics we can cover, right? But in essence, it's the sustainability of the economy that is usually the most important factor we're focusing on through enabling adequate buying pressure, you know, making sure we're not having a ton of selling pressure. Yeah, it, it totally makes sense. And it brings me to the thought that actually most of the projects are thinking much more in the short term than in the long term, right? Yep, absolutely. Yeah, so I have also noticed that these mistakes with the projects that I have had the honor to consult. So it seems that it's not only me that have figured out this. So what is actually your process of choosing which project to work with and which one not to? We heard that you don't like meme tokens and things like that, but I'm sure that you have also other requirements yeah. when you're choosing which projects to work with. Yeah, I think this would be helpful for just users in general. Okay, so here's so if I were to find a scam, here's what I look for. Okay, and just as well, I don't work for meme coins or, you know, not that I have anything wrong with gambling a little bit and having fun. Okay, since that's what this is all about. Okay, that's what meme coins are about. They're not serious projects. They're not meant to be. When you trade it serious, you're already falling into the trap and making a big mistake. Okay. It's a fun thing, throw a hundred bucks in or whatever is reasonable to you and see if it goes up or down and walk away. If it goes down to nothing, you don't care. You know, it's fun. Okay. So first of all, that's how you look at meme projects. Now, let me go into what I'm looking at. So the first thing I will do is I'll go to the website. Okay. And immediately if I see the logo and it looks like a meme or it looks like garbage, I won't even consider it and I'll immediately move on. Because when I look at that, that tells me how well you understand branding. Okay. And a big part of this space is branding, being able to separate your brand from others. So that to me is already a hit. Okay. Now, if I go dig a little bit deeper and I read the white paper and I start looking at things and it makes no logical sense what you're building, that's also another red flag. I'm not saying I can't help a project, but I would look at it under the mindset of does this make any sense whatsoever? Is this idea even valid or would I have to reconstruct the entire thing? Because when you have to reconstruct the entire thing and tell somebody that their whole idea is no good, like I said with the the DAO that has the courses, that person was still arguing back with me that, no, this is good. We have a difference of opinion. I'm like, all right, fine. I don't care. No, that's fine. I'm not going to work with you either way. This doesn't make any sense to me. And fine, if you believe it, great. I could be wrong too. Have had it, right? So to me, that's sort of where I'm also looking at. If the idea is no good, it's brutal to go back and forth and fight for something and You know, it doesn't make any sense. I can take an idea that's almost there and transition it into something good, which is what I was able to do with that client. Like I said, we saved them a lot of money through launching with a bad idea. It wasn't that they were a bad individual. It wasn't that the, the idea was complete garbage. It was that the way it was structured wasn't right. Okay. And then now we have something we can work with. So that's a big part of what I'm looking at. The other thing is if they have a team, who is the team? Are they docs? Are they not docs? I don't have any clients right now who aren't docs. Everybody will easily come on video with me if I ask them. Everybody know their first and last name. I know exactly. I don't have their home address, but I know what countries they live in. Okay. And and I also, usually I'm connected with them on LinkedIn, so I know their professional history. That's another thing I'm looking at too. 